Do you want to print faster with less artifacts on your print? Well, today's the day I'm going to show you guys how to use input shaping with Marlin and our Unified 2 firmware. Let's get to it. Input shaping is a new feature that came out in Marlin 2.12 release. And since our Unify 2 firmware is based on Marlin, we have this feature in our firmware as well. In order to take advantage of input shaping, you have to enable it in the firmware. So whether you're using an easy board with our easy firmware site, or you're compiling it with Visual Studio Code on your computer on your own, you're going to go to the community feature section and search for input shaping. You can go ahead and uncomment the input shaping line and then compile the firmware and update it on your printer. Once you have the compiled firmware installed on the printer, you can go ahead and run the test print. Now to make this easy to do, I've gone ahead and put a pre-sliced test print on our website that will work on any printer that is a 200 by 200 or larger bed. If you want to learn how to set up Prusa Slicer or Super Slicer to generate your own test print, there's a link in the video description below that goes over setting this up. Setting up the slicer can be a little complicated as you need to specify certain values like vase mode, turning off certain limitations in the actual speed settings to make sure you're achieving the faster print speeds, as well as adding a after G code layer change. So it will vary the frequency that's being compensated as it goes through the test print. So I'm going to show you a baseline benchy that I sliced on my Ender 3 Pro and print it with zero input shaping enabled. After that, we're going to go ahead and run the test print. Once the test print's completed, I'm going to show you guys how to calculate the information to put into the firmware to actually tell the printer what frequency your printer needs compensation on the X and the Y axis. And then we're going to print the same exact G code. The only difference with the second print will be that we have input shaping on in the firmware. I'm going to show you guys side by side the before and after to show you guys how awesome input shaping is and what it can do to get you better prints at a faster speed. The nice thing about input shaping with Marlin versus other input shapers like Clipper that is also a popular one is that this all runs completely on your control board. You don't have to have a complicated SBC setup with a Pi or some other single board computer. This is all done locally on your printer's processor. This means that if you're someone that likes to print off an SD card or you like to use Octoprint, you can use it with just the board. There's no other special slicer changes necessary after you tell the printer what frequencies it's compensating for on the X and Y. You just load up your G-code and start your prints. Now, while input shaping is supported on the 8-bit processors, in my experience, it does not run very well because it does require a lot of CPU horsepower to run. Many of these stock 32-bit boards in Creality Printer and Sovols and other brands handle input shaping just fine. If you're one of our customers that has the Easy Board 1 or the 2, input shaping runs great on those thanks to the massive amounts of memory on the processor and the fast CPU speeds. So now enough chatting, I'm going to show you guys some prints and the before and after so you guys can see for yourself. So this is our baseline print. This was sliced at 120 millimeters a second in Prusa Slicer. So if we can see here, you can see some ringing around the door opening here some on the front, and this is going to serve as our baseline. So this is what we're starting out with, and we're gonna run the same exact G-code after we do the input shaping tuning. So let's go ahead and run the input shaping test, and then we're going to figure out what our values are for this printer, and then we'll rerun the Benchy and compare the two results. We're gonna use the same G-code and the same filament and the same printer. So we're gonna start our input shaping test print now. It's gonna print a little L here. Test part, that's about yay high on the bed. After that's done, we're going to measure on the X and Y to see where it looks the best. Once we have that millimeter value of what the height is that looks the best on the print, we'll put it into our calculator on our website, which will give us a value to put into our firmware. Once we have that firmware setting set, we're going to go ahead and rerun this test print. Same exact G-code, same filament, same printer, everything. The only difference is we'll have input shaping on, and I'll show you the before and the after. So we're going to let this run the test print, and we'll come right back. So our test print's finished. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the bed here. So with the test print off the bed, we wanna start looking at where the least amount of ringing is. So on this axis, 
I'm going to say it's right around this fourth little notch down here. And this will be for our Y. See our Y axis on the back here. And then on the X, we want to look at that as well. Now my X is also a little bit higher up from what I can tell. I'm just basically moving this back and forth under the light and looking at seeing where the least amount of ringing is and also looking at like the sharpness of the edges here. You can look at this little indent here. You can also look at on the actual letter itself. So I'm thinking right around on my X, right around the center looks pretty clean. So I'm just thinking about right here, about halfway down. So we're saying right about there, I think that looks the best on either of these. So it doesn't matter which side. So we're taking our X measurement here now. So I'm going to go ahead and get my calipers out and we're going to go ahead and measure and see right where I think the best one is. So for my printer here on the X, it's 30.84 millimeters. I like to jot this down and let's go ahead and measure the Y. So we have our Y axis for reference here. And I think right around this, like I said, this little fourth nub in here looks the best. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that. So I'm going to come in at like 41.35 on the Y. So these are the values for my printer. Now let's switch over to our website and put these in and see what our frequency will be. So I have our TS3D site. We're going to go to the tools menu and click Marlin input shape and calculator. I got my measurements here. So my X was 30.84. And my Y was 41.35. If we scroll down here, you'll see the frequency compensation in Hertz. And you also see the G code command. So you can enter this on your LCD if your LCD supports it. If you're running one of our firmware setups on your printer and you've enabled input shaping in the firmware like we covered earlier, you can go ahead and do this right on the LCD. You can press the button here, go to configuration, advanced settings, and then input shaping. And then you can enter in your X frequency and your Y frequency. Now you'll notice it only has one decimal place and that's okay. We don't need to get super precise, but I just want to show you that you can do it from the LCD and we can also go ahead and store those settings to the EEPROM and now they're stored in the printer. You can also send this via G code. So since I have Octoprint on this printer, I can go ahead and just send these commands. I'm going to copy this one, paste it in here. You can see receive. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the Y and send that one as well. If I want to verify, I can send M503. And if we look here, we can see those values are now in the firmware. I'm going to save those to the EEPROM by sending an M500. And at this point, now I'm going to redo the same exact print that I just did, which is this guy right here. So I'm going to load this print up and we're going to start it. We're going to take a look at the before and after. So here's both of our test prints. On the left, I have the non-input shaping Benchy, and these were sliced both at 120 millimeters a second. And on the right here, I have the input shaping one. Now, one thing you'll notice in general, the print quality is cleaner on the input shaping Benchy. If you look here at the prints, you can see there's these like diagonal lines that are much more present on the non-input shaping Benchy versus the input shaping Benchy. Now, one of the spots where input shaping really shines is when you have direction changes. So like around the little door frame here, you can see there's ringing there. And on the input shaping one, it's almost completely gone. Now, I intentionally used one of our silk PLAs for this because it exaggerates any sort of imperfections with the print. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the standard Benji without input shaping. And I'm going to point out where I see flaws. One of the flaws here, see all the ringing here on the back? You can see that right there, those diagonal lines that's ringing. And another place where ringing likes to show up is on the little porthole here. 
You can see there too. And again, right here off this porthole. And then up here, you're not going to see too much, but we are going to look at it either way. So there's a look at the stock benchy with no input shaping. Now let's take a look at the one with input shaping. You can see we have cleaner lines here after the little door opening. The ring on the porthole here is almost completely gone. Isn't that crazy? So if we look where we change direction coming around here on the front of the boat, you can see it's a lot cleaner. Same thing on this porthole here. Another spot where you can see a huge difference is again here on the back left corner. So you can see here on the back left corner, almost all of that ringing is gone. Showing these side by side here, you can see a clear difference. And again, here on the front, this is the input shaping benchy. This is the non input shaping benchy. So as you guys can see, the input shaping makes a huge difference in your prints. One thing I will mention again is that when doing the prints, especially the calibration print, is try to use a silk type PLA. This filament is actually our easy choice statuesque filament, which is a bronze PLA. I highly recommend using a silk PLA because you're going to get the best effect and the most dramatic effect to try to see where the ringing is and isn't, especially when you're trying to calibrate the input shaping settings for your printer. Now, anytime you do anything drastic to your printer in terms of mechanical changes, like maybe you adjusted the belt tension or replaced the belts, changed the rollers, put a different type of bed service on that's heavier. So like you're going from a build sheet to glass plate, you're going to want to rerun the input shaping test. So before you guys do the calibration test, I'd highly recommend going over your printer, checking your belts, checking all your wheels before doing that so you can get the most accurate print. It's really cool to see this feature in Marlin. I'm actually slowly enabling it on all of our printers because the print quality, even at the higher speeds, is so much better and it just gives cleaner prints in general, even if you're not pushing the printer at faster speeds. One other thing you might want to try is if you're not happy with how fast a printer is moving, you can try upping the acceleration settings on your printer and the jerk settings, which you can all do in Marlin and in our Unified 2 firmware. Just make sure not to set it too fast because there are physical limitations with your printer in terms of how fast it can move each axis. What I recommend doing is setting your jerk to around five to six for a printer that's 300 by 300 or less. And if it's bigger than 300 by 300, I would recommend staying around the four to five for the jerk setting. In terms of acceleration, an Ender 3 can handle anywhere from 2000 to 3000 excels with no problems, but you can push it harder if your printer is adjusted or maybe you have linear rails on there, you can get more speed out of it. If you are going to play with your acceleration jerk settings, do that before doing the calibration because those will also change the outcome because as you change your acceleration and jerk values, it's going to make the printer run harder and faster in terms of how fast it's accelerating and decelerating on each axis, as well as how hard it's changing direction when you're messing with the jerk settings. Now, the test print I did here on my Ender 3 Pro is using the Unify 2 firmware defaults for acceleration and jerk. If you do want to change your acceleration and jerk settings and you're running our Unify 2 firmware or Marlin firmware, you can do that all from the LCD settings, even while the printer is running a print. So I hope you guys really enjoyed watching this video. I hope it showed you what input shaping can do to your printer. And I hope to see you guys using it on your machines to get better print quality and faster prints, all without having to deal with complicated setup that comes with Clipper. I think the fact that Marlin can do this all on your CPU is really awesome. And it's really nice to see a firmware taking advantage of these fast 32-bit processors that we're seeing on many stock printers and aftermarket boards these days. So thanks for watching. And as always, happy printing.